Hey there, everybody. Welcome to my channel, The Magical Solution. My name is Leilani, and I'm really excited tonight because I have a guest who I have been like mini stalking on TikTok because I love all of her content. And I said to myself, you know what? You know, after all this time watching her, listening to her, really just vibing with her energy, and I knew the information that was coming from her was authentic and real. I said, I want her on my show. So tonight, we get a chance to talk to I Iamio, also known as Miss Toya, okay? And she comes from a long line of root workers and conjurers, which are called hoodoo workers. And in today's terms, you know, she has been chosen to carry on her ancestors' practices to help others by teaching and offering a variety of spiritual services to assist in the empowerment of the community. And in doing so, she's also the owner of Roots and Stones LLC, through which she provides these services. She is a mentor, a teacher, a conjurer, a root worker, and a reader. Iamio has been trained from early childhood in these practices and strongly believes in the power of God and the ancestors. So tonight we're going to be talking about the hoodoo traditions of the Low Country, specifically from the background of Gullah Geechee, where she is from. And we're going to clear up some misconceptions. We're going to talk about her experiences. And hopefully we can help those of you who are curious about hoodoo and specifically the Gullah Geechee traditions to, um, to learn something new tonight. So join me in introducing Ms. Iamio, Ms. Toya. Hello there. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. <laughs> <laughs> so first and foremost, I definitely mm -hmm. want to say thank you for saying yes to me. I know I kind of just came out the blue. I just kind of TikTok messaged you. I'm like, hi, can you come on my show? And um, and I know that might seem a little weird, but I'm really glad that you said yes and that you're on here tonight. So you're you. welcome. You're welcome. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I'm glad you reached out. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out. So we have a few people in the room already. So apparently you are a very popular popular lady. Um, hello to Erin. Hello to Marion, to Aura, Kanye, um, and Sweet Shoni, and whoever else might pop in and those who are watching on the replay. Thank you so much. So let's get let's get to it. Let's let's talk about this. Um the hoodoo traditions of the low country, specifically from your background of Gullah Geechee. Let's just talk about you. Let's talk about you first. Where did this all start? Like, how did you learn? How did hoodoo become part of your life? It's always been in the house, but we never had a name on it because we that my uncle did it. Um, because I was raised by my grandmother and my uncle. My uncle never left his mother he was the only child only boy and he he stayed by his mother um but you know when i was young i used to go places with him go to people's houses we would go you know he would stop on the side of the road and be like oh i need you to go get that and i would jump the ditch and get some type of rule or whatever but i didn't know what i was doing because i thought it was you know it was everyday life but yeah. what made me realize that i was doing something dealing with dead people <laughs> um <laughs> is because he used to have me write petitions and when I was right because he couldn't read or write so I would write the petitions when I was young so I was like around nine between nine and eleven I'll say and I was writing a petition I'm like wait a minute this man's dead <laughs> you know what I'm saying? so I told I, I asked him I said you got me writing this letter to it was a letter in my my opinion I said you got right. me writing a letter to this dead man he was like just write what I tell you just tell do what I tell you to do <laughs> Don't question, just write it down. <laughs> yeah, so after that, I started to pay attention to what was going on, but it wasn't strange because we went to church and everything else. And but people will come to our house from different places, and me and my cousin be playing and they'd be in the living room. And we just run right past them, like you know, it was everyday life. So it's, it was everyday life. It's strange to me to see how it's foreign to other people because it's so close to me, if that makes sense, right. And it must feel strange too, just like how popular it has gotten across <laughs> across the world. Now everybody, Ooh, everybody does hoodoo yeah. now. And so I, you know, I can only imagine what that must feel like from the perspective of individuals who it's not a practice, it's a lifestyle, it's a way of living, and it's deeply rooted 
in so much more than just herbs and this and that. Mm -hmm. You know, you had mentioned last night um, that it's not even called hoodoo in, in your specific family line. What mm -hmm. what would you call it? You don't work. The practice. You're, You're just working. Work. You're doing work. Somebody put a root on you or, or somebody root you or you're going to the root man or the root woman. But it's voodoo is a marketeer word that kind of went away from, I'll just say in the low country. I can't speak for other places, but in the low country, it's not called that. It's everyday life. People have the lifestyle, even though they don't think about it as being something different. It's because what we do in the low country it is what it is, you know. Um, Say, for instance, we have these things like if you have a sore or something on your leg that won't heal, a dog will lick it. You can get a dog to lick it and it'll heal. You know, mm. that's just things that we do. And we've always done that. So it's pretty much never had a name on it. Um, now, when people got sick or something happened, it was to be like, OK, well, such and such got a root on them or such and such is fixed and all that other stuff. But it's, it's nothing different. But yeah. to be publicized is kind of strange even for myself because I wasn't going to do it I swear I was not going to do it I was not going to do it but um it was circumstances that just kept coming up and it kept coming up that I didn't I didn't have a choice I really didn't have a choice and um it's not as easy as some people think but yeah to be publicized like it is 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 it's strange. It's, a, it's a good thing that people want to know but it's just strange it's strange. Yeah, and like I can imagine also too the the connection. You know, we were talking about connection, especially people who are outside of the black experience, the native experience, and all the other influences that people would say is inside hoodoo. Anyone outside of that, it's I'm I'm I'm, sh I'm sure it must be difficult to say like where is that connection coming from? Like how how do you understand truly what hoodoo is? You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. we spoke last night about how the arguments, right, in, in, in the common language and in every hoodoo book that you see out here, the, the argument is it's an American practice. It's, it's got European influences, Native influences, and African influences. But I feel like that's almost like a gaslighting statement because it's an African practice. It's, mm -hmm. it's very much, like you had mentioned, very much rooted in the lineages of the people, in the land, and, and all that stuff. So, but, but the herbs, you mentioned something about the herbs where you said, although it's, you know, although it's an, an African practice and we brought a lot of things over, because you didn't have the herbs that come from your original country, you had to learn them here with the natives. Exactly. I, and a lot of people are going to be upset when I say this, but some people are already here. You know, you had black yeah. Indians that were already here, especially here in the low country around the Old Geechee River. Um, and don't ask me how, but somehow they formed some type of communication to where um, our ancestors that were brought over were able to learn the properties of the herbs, you know, and they intermingled. They, they had children and, and all of this other stuff. So it's pretty much it's a blend, if you want to say it like that, but it comes from the oppression of the enslaved. Because guess what? They tried to enslave the Native Americans as well. So it's an oppression of the of the enslaved. You know, um, this practice was meant to hold your family together to survive. Okay? Yeah. And to protect yourself. You know, we were talking last night about binding. Binding is done to keep your family together. It's not to keep anybody to you that doesn't want to be to you it was done to keep the slave master from selling off the wife the husband the kids and they were trying to stay together so they did these spells or these workings to keep their family together it wasn't to bind anybody against their free will so binding is a thing but it's taken out of context these days yeah yeah and you can almost look at it like these these root practices conjure practices they're what they really are is their indigenous practices overall they're african indigenous practices rooted in oppression rooted in slavery rooted in survival exactly and you know if you don't have that if that's not something that's part of your story like that's not you just you don't have that connection you just mm -hmm. don't so that's why i'm i'm always like 
okay, I get the argument why some would say it's closed, some would say it's open, but I think ultimately it's about that oppression. Are you in a, are you, are, is that your background or are you currently in a state of survival? Like, how does that, you know what I mean? Yes, our, we work with the spirit of the ancestors, the spirit of the, the dead, as well as the living. You know, I'm going to be honest because we're working with herbs and trees and, and all this other stuff. That's living things. So we're working with the spirit of the dead as well as the spirit of the limit, living. And if you don't have any ancestors that have done this or come from this, it's going to be kind of hard for you to get that type of knowledge that's passed down through your DNA, you know. And, you know, there's such thing as a direct answer to which ancestors, which is your, your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents. But we also work with aunts and uncles and cousins and because we look at it as one big family everybody's family is no such thing as a disconnect when it comes to your ancestors so we will pull from whomever is was good at whatever in our work mm. so that's how that's interesting i know i know like some tra some traditions are so like there are so many different takes on how to do ancestor veneration you know mm -hmm. you have like some traditions that are like you know, you can't consider them an ancestor unless they're six generations past, mm -hmm. or you can't consider them an ancestor unless they are like elevated and like good. Um, you can't work with this one unless they're within like um, the family bloodline, the immediate circle and all this, like there's so many different takes everywhere you turn. Mm -hmm. so, so in the Gullah Geechee practice or specifically in your family line, it's all good. Everyone had their own specialty. And you call it whoever you call. Mm -hmm. But this yeah, is like the that. key to it. You can't just call on any, you know, because you know for yourself, all spirits not going to work when you ask them to work. So you have Back. to get permission to do certain things. But yeah, that's pretty much how it is. And, you know, I want to say this. Different places have different ways of practicing. Um but in the low country, it's, it's a little bit different because we depend also on places. We depend on certain things. We depend on um, stuff that come out of the sea. You know, we depend, depend on everything that's right here with us. So we make it work in a different way, you know, if that makes sense. And yes, people in the Gullah Geechee community do practice sort of differently when it comes to their family, but the foundation is the same. It's always going to be the same. Speaking of the foundation, you know, we were talking yesterday about how different hoodoo traditions, different root traditions um, can be different in terms of practice, and they can even be different in terms of family lineages. Mm -hmm. What makes Gullah Geechee tradition, or specifically yours, different from others, other practices? Or like, is there like a basic, is there a standardized thing across all? Um, one thing I can say that sticks out with us versus a lot of other um, regions is the use of the Bible. You know, down here, we believe if you ain't using the Bible, you ain't doing nothing. That, that's just it. You know, we have a strong belief in God. We got a, a strong faith in the unseen. So we have to give our people what they know. Um, they use that tool that was used to beat and oppress them and made it their weapon. If, if that makes sense. So that's why we are so um, adamant about when people say, oh, we don't use the Bible. Well, we, first thing we say is, well, what you doing? Because we don't understand, you know, what are you <laughs> doing if, if you're not doing it? You know, um, okay. another thing that we rely on is salt. We, we rely on salts because we see salt as being the strength of our ancestors. And we rely a lot on cotton as well. Because of interesting. Reason. So salt, that's interesting because in a lot of traditions, you think salt would push away spirits or send away spirits. Mm -hmm. But in your particular case, it helps you connect with them? Salt will do anything you tell it to do. Mm. <laughs> salt will cleanse you. Salt will bring things to you. Salt will banish things. Salt will protect you. It's just on how you work it. Because and you have to you think about it. Um, back in the day, I can speak for my grandmother and my grandfather. We she only went shopping once a week. Um, my uncle used whatever he had, like right around him, or what grew, what grew in the area. So we used what we had, and salt was always in the kitchen. Mm. 
And I like the way you said that. It depends on how you work it. You know, there's always this this huge debate going around that says intention is not everything. And although that is true, there is something to be said about everything is incarnate. Everything has spirit. Mm -hmm. So, like, although intention might not be everything, the way you work that spirit of that thing is everything. Exactly. <laughs> well, you work the spirit of that and the spirit that you put, that you assign to work it, if that makes right. sense. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and it's, it's not hard. It's not hard. People just try to, you know, they, they I think they overthink it. I think they overthink it. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, no, you're 100% right. They overthink it. it. You know, it's crazy because... I think this idea of quote unquote magic or um, energy, whatever you want to call it, it is complicated in the sense that you, you know, you do have to be careful. Yes, you do. You can't, you can't play with this. It's the no, truth. You can't. But it's also when you get past the, the work that needs to be done in, under, in order to understand all the rules to keep yourself safe, da, 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 da. when you get past all of that, it's so simple. You know it, what I mean? It it's is. crazy. <laughs> it is so simple. I mean, you don't have to light 15 candles and, and dance around and do you don't have to do that. You mm -hmm. know, it is so simple because it's the spirits that walk with you and work with you that pushes your work. Yeah. Yeah. Not the tool, it's what's within you and what's surrounded surrounds you is what pushes your work. You know what? Yes, the tools. Let's 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 talk about that for a second because <laughs> I'm so tired of it. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm an aesthetic. I'm an aesthetic person. I like pretty things. I like mm -hmm. things. All right. And if I have the money, I'm gonna spend it. <laughs> okay. No, but me too. you know, but you but you don't need it. You don't need it. And I think in your particular tradition, you you were speaking to me yesterday about. How really it's not about the tools, it's about the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's about the, um, like you said, it's about the spirit. Say, for instance, you want to use a candle. There's nothing wrong with using a candle, right? Um, if you want to use a candle, of course, you want to layer that with some type of herbs or whatever the case may be. Um, what I've learned is that when you do things like that and you, you give it to, I want to say, your clients or, or whatever the case may be, that's to give them a different kind of the connection, a different type of connection that they don't have yet, if that makes sense. But once they reach that type, that type of connection, and um, any of my my mentees or, or clients can tell you, I'd be like, "Come on, y'all, y'all don't need that no more. <laughs> you, you don't need to do that no more. You know, take off the training reels. <laughs> that was in the beginning, so you don't have to do that anymore. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, all you need is some fire, and some water, fire, and water, and some air." The wind. Some fire, water, and air. Some elements. Exactly. Some elements. <laughs> Pretty much. It's true. It's true. And I think that that's across, especially indigenous practices. It's like mm -hmm. a, That's across the board. I mean, our connection to the earth mm -hmm. and, and specifically what, what we were talking about yesterday, the land. Mm -hmm. And see, that's another thing that always kind of, that throws me off with this idea of hoodoo being an open or closed practice. You mentioned that hoodoo is a, is a connection to the land. Mm -hmm. That same land that people were brought in, enslaved on, beaten, and killed. That same land that is soaked with blood yep. of our ancestors, of your ancestors. How can you claim connection to that? How can you claim that? That's not yours to claim. You know what I mean? <laughs> So it, it always like blows my mind. And I understand, like you had mentioned yesterday, connection, that it can be born and passed down, but it can also be given. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but <laughs> what, what happens is that. <laughs> when I say given, this, this is what I mean. Um, it's certain secrets that are given to people for different reasons. Okay. Um, you know, we were talking yesterday, and I, I know people about to go off the deep end with this, but I want y'all to do listen. it. I'm saying it. Listen to how I'm saying it, okay? Um, 
during slavery or even when uh, a slavery was so-called abolished or whatever the case may be, there was still a lot of black women that were taking care of white children. And they treated these children as if they were their own. So if they saw that they were being mistreated, um, abused, or taken advantage of in any way, they would show them how to do certain things in order to protect themselves, as well as the wives of the the, um, the slave owners, because everybody wasn't all bad, you know? Right. And by being given those secrets by that particular person, they inherited that through a gift. It was given to them through a gift. So um, they would be able to call on that person who's passed on to come and help them because they helped them in life. Mm. D- does that make sense? Yeah. So there's that connection there, yeah. But I'm going to tell you this. A person who has really been given that will never say it. Mm. They're not going to tell you that. They're not going to broadcast that. Oh, well, I know how to do it. I knew. They're not going to do it. That's just the way it is. I mean, I, that would have to also be part of, not shame, but like it would also kind of admit too, like, because my ancestors owned them. So we, mm-hmm. there was a point where, you know, so that there's also that piece of it, that layer that I'm pretty sure a lot of them don't want to, don't want to address. <laughs> you nope. Know? Nope. So but, you can get it through that way. Or um, if somebody decides to take you on um, and they begin to work with you and allow you certain access to things that they know how to do it can be given to you that way as well but that's rare that's that's very rare um Mm -hmm. when i teach i teach according to what the other person's ancestors tell me to say because everybody's practice is different so i can't what works for me may not work for you so i can only call on the spirits that walk with you in order to tell me what you need in order to advance you in, in your walk so um, with me, it's still ancestor based because I have to build a relationship with those people's ancestors in order to be able to guide and direct them. Mm. There's another piece, there's another element that I think a lot of people forget too. And so, uh, in order to have this connection, we've, we've narrowed it down to a few things. You know, there's, a, there's an ancestral connection, mm-hmm. there's family, there's a family lineage that gets passed down. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also something unique about Gullah Geechee traditions is your language. Like mm-hmm. y'all have a whole different speech going on. A whole different. <laughs> a whole different speech that even amongst other hoodoo practitioners in around those areas, like it's not, it's not universal. Mm-mm. And that's yet okay. another thing that I feel, again, not everyone has access to that. That's a language. Mm-hmm. Um, how did, was that used in your family as well? Yeah, we spoke two different ways. I spoke, um, like this when I went to school and then I talked a different way when I went home because my grandparents, my grandmother, she, she was, you know, real Gucci, <laughs> her, her and my granddaddy. So, um, I just spoke how, how we were taught to speak as kids. And then we went to school and it was like, oh, this is wrong. You don't say that ain't in a word. You know, we would never say going, we would say gwine. So mm. you wouldn't think going and gwine is the same thing. Like we wouldn't say come here, we would say come day young. So it's backwards, if, if it makes sense. Wow. So, wow. you know, if somebody that wasn't from the culture would come to our house and then be like, what the hell? <laughs> you know what I'm but not only that, if the enemy can't understand what you're saying, that's your advantage. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You have mentioned, you had mentioned that there's a, there's a, there's a Gullah Geechee in, interpretation of the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I went to go look that up. Girl, <laughs> I looked at that, I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is legit. And, I, and again, that's part of the magic. That's part of the appeal. That's part of how you protect, mm-hmm. you know, your secrets. You know? yeah. Because if you were to read that, you would be like, what in the hell? I mean, you need yes. a whole translator 
to understand what this thing was being written. But to us, you know, that's how it is. <laughs> that's just how we talk. <laughs> and I can't. That's just how we talk. It's not a, I, I know I asked this before. It's not written. It's a complete oral tradition that's passed down. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. And the reason why it's oral is because you're not like, they will never say, come here, come in, let me show you how to put this and put, they will never say that. You will just watch and then we'll call you to bring them certain things in order to get it done. Um, but trust and believe everything that you saw when it's time for you to remember it, it comes together. I, I don't know how it works, but it, it just comes together. And the knowledge, the ancestral knowledge is like you can hear them talking you through everything that you have to do. Mm. You know? And um, another thing that kind of freaked me out um, when I got a little bit older is my great grandfather died two weeks after I was born. Right. Mm. But um I always see this older man show up and I'm like, that's not my granddaddy. I'm talking about like my mother's father. I'm like, that's not him. I don't know who this man is. But come to find out, it was my granddaddy who had been with me since I was a child. Oh, wow. And I didn't know it. I thought it was somebody else, but it was him. It was my great grandfather. And he had shamanistic practices. You know? So, yeah. you know, then that'll be kind of like passed on to my son from him. So it, it's whomever they pick to do whatever they want to do within the line because it has to keep going. In our family, we don't have a choice. We, we really don't have a choice. Um, and one of the reasons why I decided to go public is because, you know, it's been, how can I say? The things that my family has done for people has been overlooked for so long and, you know, they didn't get their just dues or their flowers while they were living. So I decided um, to do to do this because they kept pushing me out. Like, you know, it, it's time to pr- t- take this out because people are really paying attention to what's going on. Yep. And, you know, um, as far as my aunt is concerned, you know, that's my grandmother's sister. But I did not learn directly under my aunt. I learned directly under my uncle, who he learned directly under her in... Um, and remember what I said, you can be passed on. It's this man that we used to call Uncle Dow that lived like mm, about one street over. My uncle learned from him as a little boy as well. So he had two teachers. Not wow. one. So it's like it's it's a community thing. It's not it's it's not just, you know, this solitary little practitioner trying to figure it out. Mm-mm. It's it's the community raises a child in a sense, you know what I mean? It's the same thing with the, mm-hmm. the, the but like when you were growing up, I know you said it was a way of life. I, I mm-hmm. know that it, you kind of didn't really think about it as this is work or this is a separate thing. But but what was it like to live in that kind of community where people knew to go to your uncle to get work done or people knew, you know, what your family was all about? You know, did you ever notice those little things or pay attention to all those little things? Or was it just like you're outside playing and you're just seeing you know, they, they it out? Forget- they would pick at me every now and then and be like, we know your uncle the root man. You know, <laughs> everybody, because his nickname was Nuki. We know Nuki the root man. You know, just playing, you know, trying to be funny or whatever. Um, but other than that, no. No, yeah, it was just a, it was just life. Mm-hmm. That's that's amazing. Our church is like right up the street, and it was the same thing. They know what was going on, but right. nobody ever said anything because you know. That's what it was. And then it was one point in his life where he wanted to stop and, and to go to church. And when he went to church, he said, I can't do it. Mm. So these, these, the, the spirits that he worked with had such a strong connection to him that wouldn't let him go. So mm. he had to continue on doing what he was doing. He couldn't when get you... married. He couldn't do none of that. Hmm? Oh, wow. So it was really, truly a devotion. It was like, you give up and you just go in. Was that his, that was his choice though? Like, can, can you still live a normal life and still do, do this? Well, you know, he, he lived a normal, normal life on the outside. You know what I'm saying? Like he would go wherever he wanted to go and do things that he wanted to do, but he has one daughter. He never got married. He never left here. Mm. Right. Well, I mean, now he never left here. 
He always took care of his mother. He dedicated his life to service of other people, working with spirits and taking care of his family. Wow. And going to work. That's all he ever did. That's all I ever see him do. You had mentioned that you had no choice mm-hmm. when it came to this. And this idea of like being chosen. So in your community specifically or just in your family line? In my is it family just, line. Is it just you? And this generation, in my generation, yes. But in the next generation, which is my children, honestly, it's going to be all of them. Because each one of them will have a different, you know, thing to do. Um, I have cousins, you know, that they do, you know, work for themselves or, or whatever the case may be. But it, it's just me. It's just you. Wow. It's that That's a lot. That's a it's lot. A whole lot. That's a, a lot. Because it's not just your family that you're taking care of. It's your community too, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. It's a whole lot. Now, so, does... Know, does the hoodoo tradition have a specific form of divination or um or is it just working through the spirits and the spirits tell you what's going on with a client you can um divine however you know it just depends sometimes you can you can read cards um you can read tarot you can read playing cards you can use coins you can use shells you can use keys it, it just depends but um, when it comes to like, was if somebody has some type of ailment, or that's what you're talking about, some type of attachment, or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. spirit shows you what it is and how to how to address it, how to how to get rid of it, because everybody is not the same. Um, right. Some things you can take a bath for, some things you got to go to the cemetery for. Right. You know, so it it just depends on what it is. I'm a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. Like when, when spirit want to talk or, or when spirit really needs to reveal something, I take a nap. I literally say, okay, it's time. But then I go to sleep and I wake up and I got names and I got faces and I got, and we can just go in. Um, that's that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's interesting. That's really interesting. When you, when you were talking about binding and mm-hmm. I loved, I love when you said that because it's true. Like so many people, see certain spell works of hoodoo because i feel again it's it's been it's been monetized it's been commercialized bits and pieces have been taken so you see you know the mojo bag over here you see binding spells over here you see crown of success oil over here um you see high john high root and his story and stuff over here but it's it's missing that that history, that, that root of where it all comes from. And so I love when you talked about binding and how binding is about more than anything, keeping the family together during slavery, keeping the family together so that the slave masters wouldn't sell them off separately. Whereas Mm -hmm. people now are using binding for like love spells and to tether this person to this person. Are Mm -hmm. there other, are there other kinds of workings that you've noticed are being represented today? that are not how it's actually supposed to be represented in your, in your tradition? Um, it, it just depends because, you know, like everybody practices differently, but one thing you, you mentioned, um, the different oils and, and things like that. Oils work if you have a conjured connection to it. Um, excuse me, those oils are, are prayed over. Um, certain scriptures are read over. Um, certain spirits are called, for that specific reason. Um, when it comes to high John, high John is not work with how people think he's worked with, you know, just because you got a high John root, you, you, you have to do other things in order to get that to work. Um, mm-hmm. I, I just think the showing your work thing for me, it, it, it's just the only way you will see me show work is if it's a group working right. and I'm not going to show that until it's like, working while it's working not all the prep and all that other stuff i'm not going to show how you know what i say what i do i'm not going to show none of that because why right you you are letting people into your connection you're you're giving people i want to say like this you're showing people your hand you're showing people what you know how to do you're showing people who you you're working with what you're working with and it can work against it you, you know and 
that's the issue that I have with a lot of things, showing your work. You do not have to prove a point to nobody. Right. Nobody needs to know who you're calling on, when you're calling on them and whatever. And not only that, when they show work, it gives like, a, I'm not going to say that the work isn't working. But what I'm saying is it gives a false reality to other people thinking that they can do the same thing that that person is doing, not knowing that hoodoo is not a one size fit all. So you can't and see somebody else working it for money and think that money is going to come to you. You don't know what that person did. That person already cleansed. That person already did they, the blockbuster road open or whatever you want to do. And now they're doing the working. But you just start with some money work and you got all this stuff all over you. You're not getting nothing. Facts. Nothing. Facts. Do you feel the same way um, when it comes to like altars and stuff? Is is there a form of altar space? It is. Uh, really, it's like a working altar. Um, sometimes you don't need an altar, to be honest, because... um. It just depends on your connection. Um, they'll tell you when they want to go up. They'll tell you when they want to go down. Um, and if you don't understand, you know, I walked in here and I've seen pictures on the floor. I'm like, how you got on the floor? You know what I'm saying? So I just take them off and, and stick it in the Bible. But um, I don't think you should show your altars because sometimes your spirits are not strong enough when it comes to other people trying to capture them or, mm. or you know, pull them to them. And turn them against you because they will try to do it. So yeah. if you you don't know that your your family is that strong, then I don't suggest that you show it because there's some evil ass people in this world, and they will try things like that. So I don't they recommend will. you show it. I don't. No, I agree. I agree 150. percent I know there's a there's a huge debate in the community about whether or not people can uh, work your ancestors or take them from you or, um, work your they spirits can. or take them from you. And they can't, I mean, it's, it's the same concept as you as a living human being right now. You're a living person with a spirit, but you know what? Your spirit can be tainted. Your spirit can be cursed. Your spirit can be trapped. Your spirit can be sent somewhere mm -hmm. working. So what makes you think that when you die, that that can't be done to that spirit? Of course it can. Exactly. So, that doesn't, that argument to me doesn't make any sense, but, um, yeah. And, and also the, the whole divination thing, I always hear a lot of debate around whether or not you should have your divination done in a specific spot every time, or if it meet, if, if it can be done just any which way, um, there's an argument about whether or not you can do it on your bed, you know, doing divination on your bed. What do you think about that? Like when you're when you're in headspace to do divination or when you're calling down spirits for divine workings um, to reveal divine messages, do you think that should be done in a special place or can it be done anywhere? Now, when it comes to workings, I suggest that you work in a space where the spirits won't be bothered. You know, you don't have children running through or people coming in and all that other stuff. Um, but when it comes to like just doing divination for like other people, is is that what you're talking about? Sure, all of okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you're doing divination for other people, I feel like wherever you feel is comfortable, where you want to do it, you know, that's fine with me because, um, if they don't want to come to that place, you're not gonna get a message. Right. So, yeah. You know, I think you just need to use your your discernment when it comes to that. Um, but when it comes to actually calling down spirits for certain reasons, and you no, know, I recommend you be someplace. You don't have to be the same place, but I recommend you be someplace that, um, in the event something else comes through, other people won't be affected. Right. That I I definitely agree with that for sure. But like it reminds me with the divination thing. Like it kind of reminds me of um, uh, the Matrix movie with Neo and the Oracle. Oh, she right there in her kitchen. She's just in her kitchen baking cookies. And then they sit at the table and she doesn't read him for filth. She just tells him the story. You know? <laughs> and I love that because that's so just, that's the vibe. That's the vibe mm -hmm. that we get indigenous practitioners, African practitioners, native, like our, our grandmas, the, the abuelas of the, of the traditions. It's true. They would just take their playing cards and wherever they sat, that's, they would just do it right then and there. You know, I love mm -hmm. that. Look at all these people that are saying hello. Um, so I have a question here. We might have answered this earlier before, but um, just in case they might have missed earlier, um, could someone practice hoodoo without having any relation with a spirit? No. So I'm assuming no, because it's it's spirit-based. 
Mm-hmm. It's spirit based and specifically ancestral spirit based. Mm-hmm. Now you can begin to learn. Um, if you feel like you don't have a connection with your, your spirits, I think you need to build a connection with your higher power first. At least. <laughs> exactly. And At then least. invite um, the spirits that walk with you, you know, that mean you well to reveal themselves to you. You know, that's how you can build a relationship. But you, you know, there are ancestors, but there is a higher power as well. So you, you need to build a relationship with your higher power first and then start to call on the spirits. And then they'll come through. Then you'll be, I'm not going to say you'll be 100% safe, but you will be protected in some shape, form, or fashion. You know. Yeah. Um, I believe in a scripture that says, um, with all that I get and get understanding. So pray for understanding and wisdom to be able to, you know, discern what is what. That's what you need to pray for first. Discernment, wisdom, and understanding. Then yeah. you will be able to go on to whatever spirits is coming because they'll make themselves known. Trust they me. Sure will. They will make themselves known. Somebody will start talking about them all the time. You keep seeing the pictures all the time. Um, you just start seeing somebody, you know, like randomly in, in your thoughts and in your your um your dreams, and you'll be like, Well, who is this person? And then they'll reveal themselves. So when the time is right, your spirits will reveal themselves to you. It is no doubt about that. Yes. So in the hoodoo tradition. Is there almost, I wouldn't want to say that it's like a religion, but is it, is there kind of like a hierarchy of spirits there? So you, like you have God mm -hmm. and you definitely have your ancestors mm -hmm. and you have the energies of these elements that you work with. Mm -hmm. But like, do you guys also have like angels or like demons or like any other kind of spirits that kind of fall into this, this hierarchy? Um, we work with the spirits, um, of the Bible, of course, we work with um, different spirits within the African um, American. How can I say experience? If I want to say it like that, um, you know, right. we work with High John. Um, we'll work with different spirits of the railroad. We don't put a name on it. I say it like that. We work with the spirit of the railroad, or the spirit of the crossroad, or the spirit of the graveyard. It's just the spirit of. We don't put a specific name on it okay gotcha. but of course god is first um and then we can begin to call on the ancestors for the guidance and then we will call on the other spirits that is um needed for that particular time and you have to understand this the spirits that are passed on they had spirits that walk with them as well that were not ancestors so you inherit all of those spirits when it comes to doing this type of work so it's not just one spirit you're working with it's never just one it's never just one. Mm -mm. You said it right. You said it, spirits have spirits too. <laughs> <laughs> never just no, one. you're right. And I love the way you said that too. Like when you were before, when you were talking about spirits of the land, I think another piece of it that people kind of lose, like, what do you mean spirits of the land? You know, you identified just now places of power, mm -hmm. places of power, crossroads, railroads, gateways, this, that there are, there are certain sort of uh, liminal spaces in between spaces, if you will, that exist all around the world. I mean, people call them uh, meridians, people call them ley lines, people call them vortexes, whatever you want to call them, they're places mm -hmm. of power. And as a, as a hoodoo practitioner, a root worker, you're not saying, oh, this is the name of, you know, Ogun or this or that. You're just saying that's the spirit of that place of power, that particular exactly. spot. Um, and I think to me, I think that's so much more raw and more respectful. Um, Cause I mean, if they wanted a name, they'd give it to you. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Um, they have a few questions here. So we talk again, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, I think it's her name is Sonia. Um, we talked a little bit about this earlier when we were discussing the 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 interaction between natives and Africans. But she wants to know what do shamans have to do with hoodoo, if any? Okay, usually when you have shamans in your family um, or shamans that show up within your hoodoo practices, um, you have indigenous ancestors. So that's where it comes from. Yeah, it just comes from the bloodline. It's nothing anywhere that says that you have to promise practice shamanism because you're a hoodoo worker 
but it shows up in the bloodline because of the lineage, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, Not and you can find that out doing what, like uh, ancestral investigations, spiritual court mm -hmm. investigations. You can find out who your spiritual ancestors are with the help mm -hmm. of other work workers. And of course, if you have connections with your family, so they mm -hmm. can reveal to you if you have a shaman in your in your background. Yeah, but it's not strictly because of who do you have, um, or does shamanism have anything to do with who do? It's the connection of the bloodlines. That's what it is. Mm. What is Roz wants to know? What is the definition of negative witchcraft, like harmful witchcraft in in hoodoo? Like, is there a separate word for that kind of a worker and for that kind of work when it's done to harm others? Left hand, left hand work. <laughs> left hand work is what you do um, when you're you're doing work to harm others or to defend yourself. Um, and anything that's negative really is considered like um left hand work mm. and are there specific spirits for that as well or can you use even your good spirits for for things like that i wouldn't use a good spirit for negative work um but you know sometimes you have spirits that walk with you or other spirits that you you know you work with that don't mind getting dirty you know what i'm saying so it, right. it, you cannot call on a passive spirit to do aggressive work right we were talking about this yesterday, and Roz, I hope you're paying attention to this. We were talking about this yesterday, that aside from the fact that you should not be playing with this, this is not a craft or a practice that you should be playing with, and I, and I kind of feel that way about all um, magical practices, but I think what's really important and what's kind of universal across almost every religion and almost every practice is this idea of spiritual development. Because you are working with spirits that you may or may not have control over. So, for example, if you need to do some kind of painful work and you need to call on that uncle that you never met because he died before you were born because he was a gangster and did all kinds of fucked up shit and he died in the streets. But you knew that story. So you're like, you know what, let me call him because maybe he can help me out in this situation. So now you call this ancestor in that you have no real living connection with, and mm -hmm. he's uncontrollable. He's uncontrollable. Now you just you just brought in something that's running wild, even though he's your bloodline. Yep. Um, and that just goes to show the work that needs to be done on yourself first, that you can be able to control these spirits. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why you have to be cautious. Um find somebody no i'm, I'm saying like this the teacher will find you when it's time i'm, I'm just gonna be honest the teacher will find you but you don't always have to say okay i'm gonna call on an uncle who will do this and who will do that right you will call on certain spirits you know and then they will go get the ones to do it for you right you see so it is it's more to it than what people think it is you don't always call on that spirit to do that work for you. Your spirits call the other spirits in that really don't give a damn or <laughs> whatever other type of spirits that do the work for, for you. You know, so that's where that ancestral connection and relationship comes from. Who do you guys is faith based and is working a lot with spirits. Yes, we use outside tools. Yes, we burn candles and herbs and that's just calling on other spirits really spirit of the plant or, or whatever the case may be to to layer your work but ultimately the spirits do the work the spirits do the work yeah yeah we were talking we were saying how like for example when we were talking about the tools yeah you don't really need them but if you're going to use them it's this idea of like you know when you're dressing a candle with oils and or herbs you're not just grabbing anything out of your kitchen and dumping it on there and then lighting it without, you know, you're, you're, you're speaking life into the herb. You're calling yeah. forth the spirit of that oil. You're imbuing this and that. You're praying. You're breathing. There's stuff that's happening to wake up these spirits of these particular ingredients so that they can work in harmony with each other. Exactly. You know, and that's another thing, another part of your practice that I find fascinating is knowing which spirits play nice together. 
with regards to your ingredients. Mm -hmm. You know, you you know, some people and then and then whether or not they play nice with the client, because your client has their own sets of spirits that may not like mm -hmm. for me, for example, when <laughs> I um want to do work that involves me needing to rest and calm down, 90% of people will use lavender. Mm -hmm. Lavender wakes me up. I don't lavender me and lavender do not get along that bitch is just relentless. <laughs> she's relentless and so i say to i say to anyone who does work for me i say don't put lavender in my dream pillows don't put lavender if you want to put me to sleep use something else we don't play nice mm -hmm. and that's really important i think that uh, your your work requires you to know those things and be able to have communication with those spirits to know those things Hey, you you said lavender, and I'm, I'm going to make you laugh. I know we're almost out of time. So, you know, a lot of people like to use coffee to speed things up, right? In life, coffee puts me to sleep. I would never use coffee to speed anything up that I have going on. Because if I drink coffee, I'm going straight to sleep. So why would I put coffee in my work knowing my work would be so slow? If I Sluggish. Put, yeah, if I put coffee in it. So, no. You have to understand that there's a balance because we work with the spirit of the living and the dead so there is a balance what doesn't agree with you physically and it really ain't gonna agree with you spiritually uh and that's a good point Bye. that is a real good point because me and coffee mm -mm, i'll be sleeping in a matter of <laughs> i don't know why i, I will go to sleep <laughs> Shut up, like, I got hands. Mm -mm. Don't, mm -mm. Coffee and me? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. We have uh, Kenye here. She says, I am adopted and I have very limited knowledge of my biological family. Mm -hmm. What should I do to find my ancestry safely? <clears throat> okay, I, I want to I wanna tell you something about this. Um, I'm only speaking for hoodoo. I can't speak for any other practices. Or, or whatever the case may be. Um, every spirit that walks with you is not your ancestor. So because you were adopted, you were adopted into that family. So your family welcomed you into their family. So you have access to their spirits. I want to say it like that as well. When mm -hmm. the time is right for you to find your ancestry, I promise you, you will find out. So don't be so stuck on trying to, I can't, I can't do any type of work because I don't know who my ancestors are. You in a family, you have a family. So work with the spirits that you knew from that family. If that makes sense. Don't, don't overwhelm yourself or burden yourself down thinking I can't find this and I can't find it. They'll show up. They will. Mm -hmm. But y'all, before y'all start working with these ancestors, please work on yourself. Yes. Because like you said, calling in a gangster uncle, um, and yet you can't control. And one of the reasons why you can't control them is because you can't control yourself. So if you can't control yourself, you can't control spirits, which you really can't control them anyway. But I'm just saying you really have no control over anything if you can't control yourself. Mm. Which is which brings us back to that original thing. It's the self-development comes first. Mm -hmm. Self-development, spiritual development of the self comes first. It and you know, your connection with God. Mm -hmm. First and foremost. Yep. The, the rest will come. Um, it's so true. Everything starts with you, Sade. Everything starts with you. Awesome. So we have five minutes left. Okay. And I wanted to ask you, for everyone who's in the chat, everyone who's going to watch this later on, if someone would like to be invited into the practice of hoodoo, and be bestowed the gift of connection with someone how would they go about seeking that that wisdom that person that community um and what kind of advice could you give them when searching and when when doing this work my advice when trying to find somebody is to and i know this sounds cliche but to pray about it um ask your ancestors to lead you to the person that's going to help you to develop spiritually, to help you to grow, not keep you under their thumb. 
not make you the person that does the grunt work for them so they don't have to do any, you know, you know, come clean, come clean my altar, come, you know, you know what I'm saying? None of that. Um, somebody that is, you're able to take teaching from because everything is not going to be what you want to hear. It's not going to be what you want to hear. Um, and your teacher, your mentor, or whoever it is, they will give you the knowledge based upon what their ancestors allow them to tell you and what your ancestors want you to know. But how I suggest that you start is working on yourself and then asking your ancestors to put that person in your path. Don't go, don't go looking for them. You know what I'm saying? But ask them to put that person in your path and you make your life so much easier. Because when mm. you go seeking out people, you don't know what the hell you're going to find. So, you know, just, just ask them to put that person in your path because just because somebody got a spiritual name, a spiritual title or whatever, that don't mean that they're, they're right or on the up and up, you know? So just ask your ancestors to, to lead you to that person and make sure that when that person is telling you to do things or you're working through things that you have a sort of conviction to know that this is great. If it's hard for you to get it, Mm -mm. but if this person is telling you and teaching you in a way to make you understand how it should work for you yeah but if you know you just can't wrap your head around nothing oh no <laughs> move on <laughs> get going quick <laughs> <laughs> it's so true we uh desert woman last question wants to know how does one develop oneself um and i believe I believe you're, you might be teaching classes soon or may want to like help some people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have classes on my website and, um, you know, I, I mentor as well. My mentorship is, is, is full. I'm telling you, it's full. But um, I do spiritual consultations, right? And that's to help you when you're already on your path, you know, um, what is left for me to tell you that you need to do. But how you develop yourself is to be honest with yourself. Be you patient really and look honest. Yourself, look yeah. yourself in the mirror and understand that you're not always right. Um, it's some things that you need to change about yourself. Figure out your triggers. Figure out your triggers. Um, but it's a constant thing. It's not a one and done. It's a lifetime development. The higher you elevate in your spiritual journey, the more things will come out about yourself that you have to deal with. Because you have to be able to say, okay, I can confront this head on if it should bring itself to me versus knocking you back down, you know, a couple notches because you haven't dealt with it in the beginning. And that's what happens. Yeah. That is what happens. Ugh. <laughs> but, saying, and, but you know what? Some people just need to learn that way, which is sad. Yeah. I always say that. Like, my, my, my father used to always tell me, Leilani, if I already fucking went through it and I'm telling you that this is what's going to fucking happen, why, you why do you still want to go through it? Like, he gets I so mad at me. It's like, I, I I'm about to save you 10 years of picking up the pieces. <laughs> My name was girl. Your head is hard. <laughs> or gal, your head hard. That was it. That was That's it. That but so yeah, but listen to your elders. Mm -hmm. People have, listen, I think probably the best advice I was ever given is that there is literally nothing that you have gone through that's unique. No. There is, we, everybody done been through it before. Mm -hmm. Nothing you have gone through is unique. The experience of heartbreak, love, this, that loss, grief, all, we've been through it. So if, if you have elders that are there to say, look, I can save you from this feeling or I can save you from this please listen. mistake. Listen. Please listen. Listen. I promise it'll save you a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> Many days I wish I listened to when they said, you know what? Make sure you do this. And, mm -mm. I, mm -hmm. I did I didn't go my own way. I want it. And I'm gonna make you, and I was very mean. Um I was you? Mean. oh God, I was mean. So um my thing was, I always had to tell somebody about yourself or 
I had to, you know, you gonna listen to me type of situation. But the older I got, I'm like, why? Because when you do that, you just give off so much, you know. It's I'll exhausting. Do, it's, yes. So yeah, I was, I was, I was something else. <laughs> that is too much. Miss mm-hmm. Toya, thank you so so You're much for tonight. Like this you was a lot up. of fun, and I want to do it again. <laughs> sure. sure. Maybe we sure. should we should do one for TikTok and Instagram. Just like play around, because I think. Okay. I think you're magnificent and well, um, thank you. Thank you. I think so the much. same about you. And thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. For sure. I want to say to uh let's see, uh, all the people that showed up tonight. We have Sade, we have Rob, Marius, Desert Woman, Very Happy Mondays, Merrick, um, oh my goodness, Kane, uh, let's see, of uh, Tony, Yusef, Zim, Raz. Melanin Royalty, Steven Salinas, Marion Green, Lisa Gomez. Oh my gosh, girl. I can't, I'm tired. <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> Aura Lily, um, Hatcher, Sonia, Holly. Okay, y'all. Okay, Bunny. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know what? I thank think y'all. I said everyone. I think I said everyone. I just want to say thank you guys so, so, so much for joining us on our show tonight. And every Sunday night, as I have new guests, um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, and most importantly, remember, this is how we grow. All right, everybody, have a great night. Good have night. A Sunday.